When you think of Survivor, you think of gorgeous people covered in mud in those sexy slow-mo shots playing on these massive game structures. You think of tribal council, blindsides, idols. But behind all of that is a wonderful collection of incredible, brilliant minds all working together to produce what we've come to know as the game of Survivor, the greatest game on earth. So I thought I'd take you on a little journey just to get a glimpse of the wonderful, magical world of the art department who makes sure that all of it comes together. Let's take a look. All right. Okay, so this is it. This is our department where all the magic begins. Let's talk to the person that's right at the top and tell us how it all works. Hi, Nico. Look at that. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good to see you. This is Mark Julian, and he is art director for this incredible production, and he has an incredible beard because you need that for the job he does, right? Yeah, exactly. It's also you don't have time to shave on this job. Is that the excuse? Mm, oh, that's okay. the excuse. It yeah. makes a lot of sense. Speaking <laughs> of which, it's a crazy job, and you guys get onto set weeks before any of the rest of the cast and crew get here, and, and you have to conceptualize, you have to manifest what was born out of LaRue's mind, right? Indeed. Our series director. Yes, exactly. So that process starts essentially for us about six weeks prior to even starting here, which is another six weeks before everybody else gets here. And that is spent in research and de design, development, conceptualizing, and developing a theme and feel for the entire show that sets it apart from any and all other shows. An enormous symphony to conduct at the end of the day, making sure that everything comes together at the right point in time. Uh, but then for that, we've got fantastic people like Rebecca here, um, also making sure that we are interfacing with all the departments, making sure the deadlines for all the departments are set well, um, and then just to basically coordinate the entire factory like that. All right, well, he's mentioned a number of uh departments. Let's go meet some of them. All right, so all the ideas are conceptualized in the office and then of course it's got to be made into reality and that happens, or starts at least, here in the construction department. Come on in. Mike. Okay. So Mike, what I find fascinating is that you have to take these crazy ideas and manifest them into reality. Where does it all begin? I mean, I basically take their concepts and turn them into working drawings so that we brief the guys what materials to use, how to construct it, making sure that each game is exactly the same, that it's not unfair for a particular contestant. You draw the blueprints and you design the games on paper and then you start with the, you know, putting together, because a lot of the stuff we do is built out of wood. Right? Yeah. I mean, what we'll do then is we'll start to test. So over there we've got one that we're ready to test and to Let's see. Let's take a look at this. What have we got here? So we'll basically take the game and we'll put the ball in and we'll test that it's possible and that it works properly and it's challenging. So hang on, what you're telling me is that you just like you do a lot of playing around. That's actually your job is to play with stuff. Mm. That's yeah. what they think. That's a pretty cool job. Yeah. That's not just what he does. We all know that if you take a look, take a look at how meticulously it's all been put together, the layers. So this is the foundation and then it goes to scenic and it gets painted and it gets turned into something that pops on camera. But it's worthless if it hasn't a good solid starting foundation, which this is. There's a lot of responsibility that rests on these shoulders. Yeah, There's a lot of late nights as well, drawings, getting it done. So once you've created this and you've tested it and it's good to go, the next step I suppose is to paint it. So that would be scenic. Yeah. Let's go check it out. Sorry mate. Sorry, no. You see, this is what I'm talking about. Look at all this. This is where the color comes to the party. Let's check it out. Janu is head of Scenic. And basically, in a nutshell, you take you, what construction brings into you and you give it life. We do the finer touches. Um, at the moment, I'm busy turning pieces of wood into rust, rusted steel. We do the puzzle pieces. Um, we do the games lanes. Ugh. We add color, stuff like tribal council, the monoliths, that's all wooden structures. Then we go with the concrete, we hand carve the rock shapes, then we add paint. There's, I think, six layers of paint, different colors combined, mixed, just to give it that like cool, monolith, mysterious look. Yeah. Stuff like these beautiful puzzles, we wrap them yeah. in cling wrap. As you can see, there's a few right, so that are completely I'm finished. Grab one of these. Look at that. So Ready for transport. Beautifully wrapped because this has to be chucked onto the back of a truck yeah. and then 
trekking down to the beaches, which are sometimes kilometers away. Some stuff is too big to paint and create in here, so you've got to kind of do the scenic on the beach. Yes, we do a lot of on-site painting as well. Um, that's also one of the fun parts of our job. We get to climb the things and sort of slowly play the game as the survivors would also. When I'm on set and our castaways come in and it's game day and they walk in and this is, they just, you can see they're marveling at it. Obviously they're also working out how tough this challenge is going to be, but they, they're literally going, oh my word, look how much trouble these people have gone to for us. And I see it in their eyes. So I, I really appreciate it, but I know they do. <laughs> You're starting to get the feel that absolutely everyone really plays and that's, they call it work. <laughs> no, we don't work here. <laughs> we only play and create. All right, I'm so right. let's go check out some of those structures on the beach. This way. Cool, enjoy. Thank you. All right, so here's a really great example of a huge piece that's been constructed and then scenic and then has to be installed on the beach. And of course, the job of installation and making sure everything looks right is up to this good man, Jabu. One of the things that really stands out about what we do with Survive, and especially your department, is making use of local talent. Please unpack that for me. Oh yeah, uh, in most cases when we have shows like this one, like as big as this one, uh, we try and get to give back to the community by saying, okay, we're going to give back to the community by employing guys from the community. Some of them have zero, zero, no, zero skills to none. So we try and uplift the community by grabbing them and teaching them in terms of applying those skills into real life after the show is done. Jabu, some of these, <laughs> some of these games are huge with massive pieces and you've got to kind of, you've got to get them from here, from construction and you've got to get them to such remote locations which is amazing. Yeah, well, in terms of that we have an amazing crew, the local guys and our crew, the ones that we came with. Uh, in terms of installation, some of the logs as you can see are big and we yeah. take from this side from our workshop, then out to site, and we have to haul everything, so. They, they carry these things on their shoulders. It's not like we have helicopters that fly the stuff in us. So it has to be carried by hand across beaches, through forests sometimes, Tell, yeah. outcrops, and then they've got to place them and, and build these games. And then, you know, production, or the producers will come in and go, I really love what you guys have done here. Can we move that to over there? Now these things have been planted deep underground. They've been they've been anchored in. And Java's was like, yeah, we can do that. And then of course, moments later, minutes later, it's done. hours later, boom, it's done. Sometimes these things are anchored under the water. These games are built in water. So they've got to go under the water and anchor them there. Java? It takes dedication and uh, lots of uh, planning. Yeah. Even though sometimes we don't get it right the first time, but it's, we are not off by much, yeah. about a few mils. What he's trying to say is, what I think you're getting the sense of, is that he absolutely loves his job. You love your I job. I love my job, too much, too much. I enjoy. There you have it. So now you get a sense of how, how many moving parts there are. And of course you need someone to, at the culmination point, which is the games, the day the game has to actually be played, to bring all of that stuff together, make sure it all works. And that job belongs to this man. How's it? Esteban Pinar, otherwise it, known as Esteban. <laughs> How's it, Nico? How, How are you? How are you, man? No, not too bad. You're not busy bad. doing what you do so well, is messing with the finer details. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, it's my job to make sure that um, that every every single department has then, in Mark, uh, Rebecca and Mike's uh, vision, is uh, correctly displayed on set on the day. Yeah. So it's uh, meaning the game is built right, it's painted right, and um, that it is played right by the contestants. So we shoot these games real. They don't get rehearsed yeah. by the castaways. We test the games and then when the castaways come in and they play it, they play it for the first time. So everything has to work. All the balls are the same weight, all the, yeah, every every single part. So keeping it fair is a huge part of your job as well. Yes, absolutely. And what we do is we do an off-screen games briefing, yeah. which you don't see on screen, but we very meticulously explain to the castaways what they do. So Estian how the challenge works, runs yeah. through the whole thing. He's got all the rules and regulations, what they yeah. can and can't yeah. do. Stuff you don't see on screen. Mm. Yeah, so I write the rules. I make sure the contestants know exactly how to play each game uh, and then check uh, while they're playing that they are well with you yeah. playing, playing fair. Whenever I'm on set, whatever I'm wearing, somehow he's matched the color palette of what I'm, I'm wearing. wearing. So we, we're synced somehow, which is Call great. Synchronicity. because synchronicity. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. we have to run the games together. So exactly. exactly. This is my sidekick. Let's go. <laughs> Cheers. 
All right, we're going back inside and possibly to one of my favorite departments of all. This is the props department. You'll see why. Check it out. This is Gerald Sutherland, props master. Gerald gets to do the things, the fine, fine things like all of this. I mean, this is the pen in the voting booth. Look at that. That is a pen. And then, of course, the all-important snuffer. Each season we have a new one, Gerald. I know, I know you love your job. I just know you do. You guys make magic here. What do you love the most about this? Yes, Nico, I think the fact that we get the opportunity to really, really play. Sometimes the, the products and, um, I can say, the, the stuff you get on the island is a bit tricky to build stuff. So then you kind of start thinking out of the box and how to get to the end product quicker. Um, and that's the fun part, how you manipulate product and um, start turning it into magic tricks. And every season has its own theme, so you've got to kind of, you've got to make that happen as well. Exactly. One of the fascinating things, check this out. This looks like, you know, just your standard rock that you'd pick up, you know, on the beach or... Uh, but take a closer look, look at that detail. Can you see that? So that's been etched into there. But hang on, that, that's not all. This is not just a rock, this is... Look at that. Tell me about this. <laughs> so first of all, what we did was we went onto the beach to look for something really nice and fitting for the season. And we stumbled upon this little pebble that was broken in half, completely in the middle. Um, we brought it back to the workshop, thought it was a great idea to maybe take this and use it as the two-part idol. So then what we started doing is we made a silicon mold of the rock that we picked up, casted it into a urethane plastic, and then started with all the fine carving details inside or on the rock. Then I handed this over to Diavolt, my right-hand right -hand man, um, and then he started encasing the magnets on the one side and then on the other side. Very important to check your pol poles of your magnets so when you do put them back, they don't push each other off, but actually pull each other into each other. So something else that's amazing and very unique every season is the individual immunity necklace. Don't you want to... Sure thing. Just bring that over. Again, it has to be something unique Every single time, look at that. Look at the attention to detail. I mean, come on now. Imagine when this gets put around your neck after you've won an immunity challenge. And that feeling that they get, you know, when the castaways, they, everything is so real and they experience it, they're in awe because they can see how much love has gone into it. Well, there you have it. Just a, a tiny glimpse, a scratch on the surface of what it takes to create the world's greatest game. I hope you enjoyed that little trip into the magical world of the art department. I'd love to hang around, but I've got an immunity challenge to get to, so let's do this.